new stars who can capture the fans' excitement both in and out of the ring. Featherweight Kevin Kelly has shown he has the qualities to fill the bill. In the ring, he staged some spectacular fights, like his classic battle with Troy Dorsey last February. His win over the former featherweight champion solidified his position as the number one contender for the world championship. Kelly displayed the heart and courage needed to win while putting on an exciting show for the fans. No one was able to grab the spotlight in boxing better than Sugar Ray Leonard, who brought attention and money to the lighter weight classes. Kevin Kelly hopes to do the same thing, but first he has to win a title. He knows the time is right for the lighter weight fighters. Today, I think all the talents are the lighter weights now, especially being uh, Mike Tyson incarcerated, uh, being that uh, there's a lot of new promising careers coming up. Uh, I think, look, take me for instance. I hate to use myself for example, but hey, you know, uh, you got me, Junior Jones, you got Rogelio Torre. We have to bring boxing uh, up front and let it be uh, a, something to be dealt with as far as a major. How does that happen? How does that happen? Well, one way it could happen is that uh, right here in my pocket I have a card named from Cavallo Entertainment, manager marketing of uh, other kind of music artists as well as boxing artists. Uh, I consider boxing and art, boxing and art, and I say boxing artists because boxers are artists. We are something that people realize don't realize that we perform. We are entertainers, just like a singer that I may work with, or a rapper I may work with, or or something like that of that that caliber. We're entertainers, and we got to remember that. We're entertainers first, we're fighters second, because if we can't entertain the public, people don't want to see us, they don't want to see us, they don't need for us. There is a need for a star such as Sugar Ray, whose retirement has left a great void in boxing. Ray's success has had a profound effect on many young fighters, including Kevin Kelly. While Kelly doesn't mind people likening him to Leonard, he thinks there may be better comparisons. I'm a New York City fighter. I say, Kevin Kelly, here I am. I put on no act, no show. This is the real me. Uh, more or less like, you know, they say a Ray Leonard, but I say more like a young Camacho. When Camacho first came out, Camacho was exciting. Uh, they say they compare my, me and his style a lot. They say they were a lot alike. I'm like a young Camacho. I'm more or less in, in that favor. I say because Camacho, when he first started, he, he had everything. He had the world at his feet. Uh, he was always fighting on TV every week, uh, which was incredible. Uh, he was fighting good fights. He became champion of TV. I mean, he was a real TV sweetheart. And uh, what happened to him later, I don't know. But as far as Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, he was another golden boy. But sometimes when you're too good, people will start hating you a little bit, you know, because you're almost too good to be true. And uh, I think that's happened a little, little, bit, little bit later on in his career. You know, he became a little bit obsessive with the boxing and, and things took things a little too far. But as far as me, I would love for people to embrace me because I'm saying, here I am. I'm, I might be here for another five years and I plan to retire when, I re when I'm supposed to. Not, not people tell me, oh, you think, I think it's time. Or somebody put me on the camera and say, well, Kevin, I think your time is up, you know? I don't need nobody to tell me that. I know when my time is up. I know when my reflexes start going. I know it's just father time. I can't defeat father time. And I realized that and guys like Sugar Ray Leonard, George Foreman, Larry Holmes, these guys helped me, okay, and my, make my decision and say, look, Kevin, 30 years old, this is it. Kevin Kelly, the man who would love to be the star of boxing, but he's got to get to that top rung. He is now rated number one in the world by two of the boxing organizations. But as I mentioned right at the top, Gil, I think the one thing that I've been noticing of late is that he really hasn't been as focused as we saw him earlier on these stay busy fights, as you call them. Well, uh, Sam, you know, his last fight was a very lackluster performance. He's had the, he had that real tough fight with uh, Troy Dorsey, and uh, really since that fight, he really hasn't looked that spectacular in any of his uh, subsequent fights. Across the way is Roberto Villarreal, who's 22 years old. He is from Mexico and has only had one round of boxing action in a little over a year, a TKO on May the 14th. Let's get the introductions from War Todd. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event. 10 rounds of boxing in the featherweight division. Your referee is Wayne Kelly. Introducing first in the blue corner, wearing the silver trunks, weighing 127 pounds. His professional record, 17 wins, three losses and a draw, 11 big knockouts, 
from Houston, Texas, this is Roberto Villarreal. Villarreal. And now in the red corner, wearing the white trunks, blue stripe. Tipping the scales at 128 pounds. His professional record, 30 wins, no losses, 21 KOs. From Flushing, New York, the number one ranked challenger in the world, Kevin Kelly. Kelly. Ranked number one by the WBC and the WBA and number two Kevin. by the IBF. Good luck. Kevin Kelly with final instructions from trainer Phil Borgia. Hopes to be fighting by the end of the year against Paul Hodkinson for one of the featherweight titles. And Sam, you know the two and Kelly on in the same stable and I'm sure they have a friendly rivalry, but he's going to have to go some to uh, top uh, Tour's performance tonight. Villarreal turned pro at the age of 15 in Mexico, and as Gil pointed out right at the top, all but one of his professional fights have been in Mexico. He did fight in Corpus Christi, Texas, August of 1991, won a six-round decision over Conrad Sanchez. Kelly walking away from Villarreal, and Villarreal just walked off after him and landed a couple of shots. Well, he must be a puncher, Sam, because he's boxing a southpaw just about opposite of the way that uh, most of your good trainers tell you to fight a southpaw. Most of them tell you to move to your left and put your left foot outside his right foot, but uh, Torito is moving to his right, which means he's probably looking to throw right-hand leads. So he must be a puncher. He did say that he has fought southpaws before and done well against them. And he wasn't concerned about fighting a southpaw tonight in Kelly. Nice moves by Kelly. That time he got caught with a right hand. This kid's a quick player. Real banging away with the left hand. Gets plenty of leverage on his punches, Sam. He claims to have had 80 amateur fights and only lost one. It's throwing some punches. Bill Borgia yelling from the corner. Kevin Kelly wants the jab. Kelly's been throwing hooks. There's a good jab. Yeah, you brought up a good point about the Dorsey fight. Could the Dorsey fight, because it was so intense, because it was there were so many punches landed by both fighters, could it have taken a lot out of Kevin Kelly? Could have taken a lot out of both fighters. Sam. landing a couple of rights at the bell. I'll throw them out. So Borgia in the ring. Okay, pay attention. Watch your knees. I want the hip use much more. Okay? I really want we'll you to take it hard. Let's get this business over with, man. Let's get it over. Let's get it over. Okay? Pay attention. I'm toying with the jab. I want to see you tour the jail. You got to mean business with the jail. You're laying it out. I want to you know, swell him up with the jail. He's already getting swollen around his eyes. And you're only toying with the jail. And I want to see him in the jail. And I want the left hand working over to him with a gun drop on the right shoulder. You got me? Come with this guy in the fight. You got it. You're only Let's take a look at some of the activity. You can see 
Villarreal is really a guy that tries to bomb. Look at that leverage. Now, if you threw that left hook, everything's behind him when it comes back. Now, Sam, you had mentioned that uh, Villarreal had been uh, inactive. And I noticed he was breathing very, very heavy after the first round. He had some problems uh, with an appendix a couple of years back that uh, caused some inactivity. Also had recent inactivity, as I mentioned to you. Yeah, Gil, uh, having fought only once this year, May 14th, had a one-round bout in Mexico. Stopped Aro Tamez. Let him go, Frank. One round coming into tonight's action in over a year. And Sam, he was already starting to swell under his left eye. And Phil Borges, you noticed that and mentioned to Kevin Kelly, worked that jab overtime. He's already starting to swell. Kelly, good combination. A good flurry. And Kelly picking up the moves. What was good about that combination is that uh, Villarreal did not expect it. The most fighters, they throw, throw a couple of punches the way Kelly did, and they stop and admire their work. But Kelly moved right back into action. Put Villarreal by surprise. Good moves by Kelly. Kevin Kelly last saw August 20th win a 10-round decision over Antonio Hernandez. That was one of the few cards we didn't see Reggie Tour on as well. Tour's scheduled opponent dropped out. Kelly also went to the Netherlands in June and won a 10-round bout over Ulrich Johnson. So he's gotten plenty of work in since that Dorsey bout. This is his fourth fight. Well, he looks a lot better up to this point in this fight than he had in his previous fight. Yeah, Real was just pawing with that jab, not doing anything with it. Kelly has just shown a tendency to relax a little bit after doing some good work. He just let up a little bit and allowed Villarreal to come in and start banging away. That's what happened in the Dorsey fight. They took turns. There was a bang of heads there. Kelly countering with a right hand after Villarreal missed. And he's trying to finish strong and does end of round two. Kevin Kelly. White trunks with a blue trim. And the silver trunks is Roberto Villarreal. Fighting out of Houston now by way of Mexico. He was born and raised in Monclava. The reason for that uh, little over a year layoff that, uh, or inactivity of about six or seven months before that fight in May for Villarreal was he had a broken right hand. He suffered in a car accident. But he says everything is okay with the hand now. How'd you score the first two? First one even, second one to Kelly. I went for Kelly both rounds. First one real close. Second one by a wider margin. Here, Villarreal allowed to just bang away. This is something I don't understand yet. I don't understand it either. It's all right to be confident that you can do what you want anytime you feel like doing it. But again, we have judges that are scoring punches and points. And that kid scored a lot of punches and a lot of points when Kelly was against the ropes. Good left hand by Kelly. And again. Heads have banged a couple of times early in this fight. Well, you're going to find out more often when a southpaw fights an orthodox fighter. Their heads are closer together, and when they, they lead, they just bang heads. That's another reason I never like the guy to fight a southpaw. Kelly's yeah. been landing the left in this round. Scoring with some heavy punches. Setting it up nicely. There's another good left hand by Kelly. Great 
three. Wayne Kelly calls time. The mouthpiece had come out. Waited for a pause in the action. It's washed off and replaced. And that is part of the New York State rules. I think it's a good rule. Me too. As long as the guy doesn't spit the mouthpiece out intentionally, that I think should be severely punished. Kelly with a good flurry and a left hand that landed beautifully, sending down Villarreal. The count is six. The count is eight. He will not get up. It's all over. A big left hand ends this fight in the third round. Villarreal still can't get up. He tried and sat right back down. Well, Kelly just outmaneuvered him and hit him with a punch he never saw. And you get hit with a punch like that, down and out you go. Devin Kelly lifted up by his close buddy Reggie Tour. Well, what do you think? Did he did he do better than Tour? Well, <laughs> Tour just about fought a perfect fight. We did find some fault with Kevin. He relaxed a little bit. He allowed the other guy to get off. Tour was in charge the entire fight. Now Tour went 144 of the third round. This one, I think, might have ended earlier than that. Well, uh, you know, this is the Tour Kelly. Uh, they're on the same team, <laughs> Sam, but. Uh, Kelly's knockout was a lot more impressive, but again, the overall performance, I think, was a little better tonight by Mr. Tour. Villarreal on the stool after being knocked out with a big left hand by the number one featherweight contender in the world, Kevin Kelly. Let's take a look at that. That uppercut was a good one. Now, you see, he never saw that punch. He walked right into the punch. Again. This is similar to the left hand that Michael Nunn hit Sambu Kalambe with and knocked him out, and then everybody thought Michael Nunn was a puncher. But it was one of those things where we outmaneuvered him and made him walk right into the punch. There it is, the Kelly Tour Show, and it was a good one tonight. Each scoring knockouts in the third round, and a good show, and Kevin Kelly is primed for his shot at the featherweight championship. It's a happy group up there. Ward Todd will announce the official time. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, two minutes, 40 seconds, round number three. The winner by TKO and still undefeated, Kevin Kelly. I was wrong. Tour ended his fight earlier. 240. Kevin Kelly knocks out Roberto Villarreal. 31-0 with 22 knockouts. Now the record for the number one featherweight contender, Kevin Kelly, as he awaits official announcement of a title shot as he looks to go at Paul Hodkinson for the title before the end of the year. Gil will talk with Kevin Kelly when we come back. Finishing with this left hook. Down goes Villarreal, he did not get up. Kevin Kelly's in the ring with his entourage and Gil Clancy. Gil? Hey, congratulations again, guys. Now it's the Kevin, Bill, and Phil show. This thing goes oh, on and on and no, on. Now, we already had Reggie. That That's here. what I want to talk to you about. You know, he had he fought a perfect fight tonight. We said, now, what can Kevin do to do to do as well as you can't wait to did? Do you me. think he did as well as he did? Well, I didn't see his fight, so I hope I did. Well, I think he knocked him down a third round, so I think we did as well. We did equal. Well, your, your time was a little better than his. But you, you'll hear the commentary. I mean, you both were great. There's no question about that. Your next fight's going to be for the championship of the world, we hope. Hopefully. Well, the biggest thing tonight that we came into this fight doing was we didn't have a tape of this guy. We knew nothing about him. So I think with that in mind, I was a little more cautious than I would have been if I had seen him. I didn't know what to expect. I, you know, I'm fighting a Mexican from Mexico. Well, I don't know more Chavez is sneaking into the country. And the thing is, you know, Reggie sparred me for this fight. So I knew he couldn't hit as hard as Reggie. And I sparred Reggie for his fight. So he's fighting the best left in the world. And I was sparring the best right in the world. So we came tonight and we did exactly what we did in the gym. And matter of fact, Phil told me the combination to throw. But when the bell rang, I forgot the combination. So I went in the corner when they were putting a the mouthpiece back in. And I look at Reggie standing in the corner over here. And he tells me, downstairs, upstairs. I said, oh, that's the combo. So I run back and I hit him with a downstairs shot and right upstairs. It was a four punch combination because he was only getting used to the one, two, one, two, one, two. Wait a minute. I, I think I have that. <laughs> upstairs, downstairs. Didn't that run on Broadway for a while? <laughs> Out, outside of that. Uh, no, my Broadway show was left, right. Kevin, you, you did a great job tonight. I think you're ready for the championship fight. I think he's ready for the championship fight. Continued success well, to the, the Bill, Phil, team. Reggie, Kevin show, and now let's go back to Sam Rosen at ringside. <laughs> Thank you, Gil. 
And congratulations to Kevin Kelly, who wins decisively.